Hi there! Glad to see you. I'm Tim, your guide to Art Rages, and I've been waiting to show you the neighborhood. Around this central plaza, you'll find everything you wanted to know about the incredible world of art. Like the magic and appeal of colors, the uses of light, hey, new perspectives, and some old ones. Ooh, I like that. You'll find out about the composition of paintings. I say! And in the Life of Art neighborhood, you'll explore how artists live and work and why they create. Remember, this isn't a museum. We want you to touch the art, to play with it. There are lots of games and activities, so let's get started. You see this big grey obelisk behind me? You can click on it for a complete roadmap of Artrageous. Or, even more fun, you can explore on your own by clicking round the plaza to reach the Artrageous neighbourhoods. Whichever neighbourhood you choose, I'll be waiting to show you around. All right, here we are, playing Art Rages. This game came out in 1995, and it's a art educational game. This music is pretty dang awesome. It's got that beautiful MIDI sound. Those smooth keyboards. Indeed. That nice groovy bass. And those jazzy horns. So, let's get started playing Art Rages. Let's click on the albums. Well, here we go. We're in the plaza. And we have paintings, we have biographies, and activities. So, let's group this smooth tune. Great musicianship right here. Very funky, quick little bass lines. And that smooth piano. Look at the uh, paintings here at the plaza. Let's give it a go. So, we have the whole alphabet right here. Let's try clicking on A. Adirondack Guide. Home by Homer, right? We have the Alexander Mosaic. The Ambassador's Holbein. We have the Annunciation Crivelli. Artist Studio Vimir. Avenue Middle Harness Hobima. Let's get started. This is very exciting. Let's try the Adirac Guide from Homer. Winslow Homer, one of America's most famous painters, is largely responsible for raising watercolor, technically called aquarelle, to the artistic level of oil painting. This painting, called Adirondack Guide, shows a fishing guide and captures the solitude and beauty of a fishing vacation in the wilderness. Homer, who liked to visit the Adirondack Mountains in New York, painted almost 90 watercolors there, focusing on woodsmen and fishermen. This painting shows many traditional watercolor effects, overlaid washes, the transparency of the colors, and the white of the papers sparkling through to provide highlights. One of the features of aquarelle is that since no white pigment is available, you have to plan ahead and use the paper itself to achieve highlighting effects. Very interesting. The 
stats here by the the Adirondack uh, guide. Winslow Homer in 1894. It's watercolor on paper. And available in these sizes. Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. Here's the life of Homer Winslow. He was born in 1836 to 1910 when he passed away. Lived a full and long life. U.S. painter and lithographer known for his vivid seascapes in both oil and watercolor which date from the 1880s and 1890s. Born in Boston, Homer made his reputation as a realist painter with Prisoners from the Front from 1866. Recording the miseries of the American Civil War. After a visit to Paris, he turned to lighter subjects, such as studies of country life, which reflect early Impressionist influence. Winslow. Let's head on back to the index. These are the paintings we have on A. Let's keep it moving with the Alexander Mosaic. This is a mosaic that the Romans copied from a Hellenistic painting. It shows the Battle of Issus, fought between Alexander and the Persian king Darius III in 333 BC. Classical Greek and Roman artists knew something about perspective. In this mosaic, the artist uses foreshortening to show depth. That means that objects are placed at an angle to us and appear to get shorter and narrower as they go back into space. In order to show depth, the artist also uses overlapping figures. The use of shadows also adds depth. So does lightening the tone of the colors. With these horses, for example, the horse in the back is lighter in tone than the horse closest to us. Using tone to show depth is called atmospheric perspective. There's a lot of interesting aspects to this painting. Let's uh, check out the stats. This is a mosaic that the Romans copied from a Hellenistic painting. Let's check out The Ambassadors by Holbein. This painting, The Ambassadors by Hans Holbein the Younger, shows the French ambassador to England on the left and his friend the Bishop of Lavar on the right. They are surrounded by symbols of their worldly knowledge and achievements, including a lute, flutes, a globe, astrological instruments, and mathematical instruments on the table, which record the time and date, 10.30 in the morning on April 11, 1533. While this painting is meant to be viewed head-on, it contains a hidden message that reveals itself only when it is viewed from a particular angle. See that strange object at the bottom of the painting? Click on it to see what it is. This is what you would see if you could stand six and a half feet from the right edge of the painting and look at it from the eye level of the two ambassadors. Mm. The painting was supposed to hang on a staircase would have been seen from the side, making the image of the skull apparent. The artist Holbein probably placed this half-concealed image in his painting as a reminder that in spite of these men's worldly prowess, death will claim them in the end. Very interesting. This is Holbein Hans the Younger. He was born in 1497 or 98 and lived to 1543. German painter and woodcut artist, the son and pupil of Hans Holbein the Elder, Holbein was born in Augsburg 
1515, he went to Basel, where he became friendly with the scholar and humanist Erasmus and illustrated his praise of folly. He painted three portraits of him in 1523. He traveled widely in Europe, and while in England, as a painter to Henry VIII, he created a remarkable evocation of the English court in a series of graphic and perceptive portraits, the best known being those of Henry VIII and Thomas More. During his time at the English court, he also painted miniature portraits, inspiring Nicholas Hilliard, one of the finest graphic artists of his age. He executed a woodcut series, Dance of Death, from about 1525, and designed title pages for Luther's New Testament and Moore's Utopia. Pronounced Renaissance influence emerged in the Meyer Madonna from 1526 in a altarpiece in Darmstadt. Let's go to the Annunciation by Cribilly. This painting, The Annunciation with St. Amidius by Carlo Crivelli, portrays the moment when the angel Gabriel tells Mary that she will be the mother of Jesus. A fine example of linear perspective as it developed in the Renaissance, this rich scene is very much like a photograph in its realistic perspective. See how most of the lines of the buildings come to a point in the middle of the far window, right on the man's red cap? That point is called the vanishing point. And Renaissance artists were careful to arrange their pictures so that the lines of floors, walls, and ceilings would all converge into one vanishing point. This is an unusual painting, though, because the vanishing point is off to one side instead of being in the center. Hmm. Very interesting. Carlo Crivelli from, was born in 1435 and passed away in 1495. He was an Italian painter in the early Renaissance style, active in Venice. He painted extremely detailed, decorated religious works, sometimes festooned with garlands of fruit. His figurative style is strongly Italian, reflecting the influence of Matanega and Tura. His figures and architectural settings have an exceptional density, which is sometimes increased by raised gesso detailing. His Annunciation is best known, his best known work. Crivelli also is also known for his Pietas, a no notable example can be seen in Ferrara, Milan. In The Artist in His Studio, Jan Vermeer uses grays, whites, and pale yellows to create an atmosphere of stillness and detachment. A combination of the dark colors in the foreground and Vermeer's mastery of modeling light focuses our attention on the quiet, cool figure of the model. Generally interested in quiet scenes of daily life, Vermeer's use of cool colors makes him unusual among the artists of his time. I thought yellow was a warm color, considered a warm color, but obviously here he's saying that these are cool colors. It's strange. He was, uh, Jan Vermeer was a Dutch painter active in Delft. Most of his pictures are genre scenes characterized by a limpid clarity distinct air of stillness and color harmonies often based on yellow and blue right there's the blue which would be the cold color that particular painting we just saw was a yellow hue he frequently depicted solitary women in domestic settings as in the lace maker of about 1655 Vermeer is thought to have spent his whole life in Delft working as an art dealer. There are only 35 paintings ascribed to him. His work fell into obscurity until the mid to late 19th century. But he is now ranked as one of the greatest Dutch artists. In addition to genre scenes, his work compromised one religious painting, a few portraits, 
and two landscapes of which the fresh and naturalistic view of death about 1660 triggered the revival of interest in Vermeer. The artist's studio of about 1665 to 70 is one of his most elaborate compositions, the, which we just, that was the one we just looked at. So the subject appears to be allegorical, but the exact meaning remains a mystery. And for our last painting, starting with the letter A, we have Avenue Middle Harmus from Hope Bema. Oh, with a low eye level, we see lots of sky and a little bit of land. Yes. This line shows our eye level. It's the same line as the horizon. A low horizon or eye level can add power or grandeur to the scene inside the painting. We can feel small, even overwhelmed by the image. In The Avenue in Middle Harness by Meinder Tobema, the hovering sky and trees dwarf us. Because we are at the same level as the man on the road walking toward us, we share his experience as he walks through the landscape. Very interesting. Indeed. Look at the, the low horizon and the tall trees and the sky, as he said, creates the feeling of over, being overpowered by the scene. And our eye level is at the same level as the man here. Very, very good painting. So he was a Dutch landscape painter. He was the leading pupil of Jacob van Roosendaal, and his early work is derivative, but later works move from Roosendaal's sentimental depictions of nature to a characteristically realistic and unsentimental style, whatever all this stuff means. I'm not an expert in art, but his best known work is the Avenue Middle Harness, which we just looked at, and uh, you can find that one at the National Gallery in London. And he was popular with English collectors in the 18th and 19th centuries and influenced English landscape painting. His influence is particularly apparent in the work of Gamesborough. So, that was uh, all we had for uh, paintings and the letter A. In our next video, we will be possibly checking out some of the biographies or even looking at the activities. And um, so, subscribe to the channel and we're going to keep this art series going. We're going to be specializing in, not exactly specializing, but we will be at least posting a lot of educational uh, games, a lot of educational games. So, subscribe for that and uh, all the other stuff that we usually have. So, let's keep it moving. See you guys in the next video.